So as well as spaffing out two new flagship smartphones and a new watch, Google has also massively updated its Pixel Buds Pro. Busy buggers. You've got some great new features packed in there like conversation detection and this spangly new colour right here to match the beer blue Pixel 8 Pro. But the Pixel Buds Pro certainly ain't cheap at £199. Well, anyway, I've had these dinky wee ear pebbles lodged in my lug holes for over a week now to see if the Google Pixel Buds Pro are worth a punt in 2023. So here's my full review and for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now beyond that gorgeous new colour scheme, the design of the Google Pixel Buds Pro hasn't really changed up at all compared with the previous version from last year. So thankfully they don't poke too far out of your head and look ridiculous. They've got a lovely soft touch finish to them. And yeah, the lack of ear hooks definitely still gives me minor anxiety at times. I feel like these things are going to kind of flop out if I'm moving at pace, if I move my head a little bit too quickly. But thankfully the fit is nice and stable. I've had no issues with them whatsoever. You've got a selection of different size silicon tips to fit lug holes of all different shapes. And I found that even if I'm jogging, jiggling, whatever, these things stay firmly planted inside of my head. And just to prove the point, watch test. I've also found that the Pixel Buds Pro are comfortable to wear for prolonged periods. I've had them stuffed in there for a good 3-4 hours at a stretch and absolutely no ear fatigue or whatever going on. And like most modern true wireless earbuds, they are IPX4 water and sweat resistant. Now if you've got yourself one of Google's smartphones like the Pixel 8 or the Pixel 8 Pro, you'll find that all the settings you need for the Pixel Buds Pro are tucked away inside of the Bluetooth settings. No worries if not though, you can always just grab yourself the Google Pixel Buds app fresh from the Play Store. Now you've got all the settings you would expect to find squirreled away in here, including a Find My Buds feature. You can customise the touch controls, change up the sound options. We've also got a couple of new bits in here fresh for 2023, including the Hearing Wellness section. You can come to this at any time while you are listening to music and check just to make sure that the volume of your audio isn't set too loud, possibly damaging your hearing. You can also check your exposure over time to see if, again, there's any lasting damage possibly being caused. And as someone who's knackered his hearing from attending too many ravey davy gravy shenanigans as a kid, it's definitely good to see Google promoting this stuff. And if you jump on into more settings, this is how you can update the firmware. You've got some tips and tricks shenanigans, and you can also chuck a widget on your smartphone desktop. This just allows you to quickly access all of those settings with a simple poke. Now setting up the Google Pixel Buds, getting them connected with your Android smartphone is, as you would imagine, an absolute piece of piss. Literally just flip open the case and you'll immediately get a little pop-up saying, do you want to connect to the Pixel Buds Pro? Yes, please. Job done. And as usual, these Pixel Buds Pro can connect to two devices at once, so quite handy. If you want to flip between your smartphone and your laptop, say, it's all very smartly handled, nice and easy. As for the touch controls, well, no real complaints there either. You can resume your music with a quick tap like so and then pause again with another tap. You'd also have an auto pause feature, so just yank out either of the buds and your audio will stop playing and also it'll enter transparency mode. Chuck it back in and everything will go back to as it was. Stuff like double tapping a bud to skip a track works really well. You get sound feedback so you know that your taps are actually being registered. And as usual, you can swipe forwards in order to raise the volume and swipe backwards in order to lower it again. I did find I'd occasionally accidentally raise the volume a bit when I was just going to pause my music or whatever because I just slightly brushed it instead of tapping. And it's an occasional minor grumble, that's it. You could also long press either bud in order to jump between the noise cancellation mode and the transparency mode or also to conjure up the old Google Assistant or you can just completely avoid the whole pork and prod and shenanigans by using your voice, say hey which I will censor out in the video so I don't send all your smart home goodies going mental. And in the Pixel Buds Pro settings, you can deactivate those touch controls if you want. You've also got some minor customization you can do. Basically, the touch and hold can be customized to either toggle the noise cancellation or talk to the assistant. Everything else, however, is set in stone. Now, as well as conjuring up the Google Assistant with a quick bit of voice action or with a long press of those buds, you can also have the Assistant pop up and read out any notifications for any apps that you're particularly interested in. And this is a particularly handy feature if you find you miss a lot of important notifications because you're on the move, you're not glancing at your smartphone every 10 seconds. However, it can also be very distracting if you get a lot of notifications through constantly interrupting your podcast or whatever you're listening to. You can, of course, knock it off if you find you're not enjoying it. 
One of the more interesting new features here on the Google Pixel Buds Pro for 2023 is the conversation detection feature. And what this does is if you start chatting away, it will pause whatever you're listening to and activate transparency mode. It's a great bit of automation if somebody suddenly pops up and you find yourself embroiled in some unexpected chat. And I thought this feature works really well, but unfortunately it is a bit cack if you find yourself talking to yourself a lot, as I often do, just sat in this room by myself all day long. Even some proper low muttering will trigger that conversation feature and pause whatever you're listening to. And if you find you cursed yourself quite a lot, even a brief, oh, six, that'll set it off and then pause whatever you're listening to. So then you'll be angry with the world and also with your buds for interrupting your music. But conversation detection also has a built-in auto resume feature. So if it detects that you've stopped talking and there's no other voices happening all around you for about four or five seconds, then it will auto resume your music, your podcast, whatever you were listening to before. So barring any lengthy, awkward pauses in your conversation, it works really well. But if there are any other conversations going on around you in like a cafe or some other public setting, you will have to manually restart your tunes or whatever. And then there's the active noise cancellation. And I might be imagining it, but I honestly think the ANC has improved here on the Google Pixel Buds compared with how it was when I first reviewed them last year. Even in my local Mac EDs, that ANC managed to dampen down all but the most frantic of Chip and McFlurry fueled sh kicking sessions from small, obnoxiously loud children so I could enjoy my podcast or audiobook in relative peace. They're also pretty good with traffic, train sounds, etc. But like all other true wireless earbuds, the Pixel Buds Pro are vanquished by the horrendous squealing of the Bakerloo line. F that line. And there's next to no wind interference as well, so quite good on a gusty day. Now to the sound quality, and the Google Pixel Buds Pro support a pair of 11mm drivers spaffing audio into your ears. You've got an equalizer in the Bluetooth settings. You can mess around with the bass, the trebles, the mids, and everything if you want to. Although I found the bass was fairly respectable for a pair of true wireless earbuds, though the overall sound wasn't quite as well-rounded or as full-bodied as what you get in some other premium rivals at this sort of price. And that's certainly not helped by the fact that you still haven't got support for LDAC or Aptex HD or any of those standard codecs. I was happy enough listening to music on the Pixel Buds Pro and audiobooks and podcasts come through nice and crisp and clear as well. Those vocals really shine, but certainly at this sort of price point, audiophiles might want to look elsewhere. One of the other fresh new features for the Google Pixel Buds Pro for 2023 is spatial audio support complete with head tracking. I found this works perfectly well in supported content on the likes of YouTube. I think it's still kind of a niche feature, of course, and not the kind of thing that most people would actually bother ever really using or even realizing it existed. And the big G is also promising reduced audio when you're gaming on the likes of Genshin Impact on supported smartphones like the Pixel 8 and the Pixel 8 Pro. I certainly had no complaints in this area. It sounded like the audio was perfectly matched with the visuals. And the Pixel Buds Pro are excellent if you actually take a lot of phone calls on your smartphone. You've now got Bluetooth super wideband support for those beamforming mics as long as you have a Pixel 8 or a Pixel 8 Pro stuffed in your shorts. The call quality is excellent. I'm recording this on a Pixel 8 Pro. And Google has also enhanced the performance with AI noise cancelling smart arsery. And this is absolutely fine if it's just dealing with low levels of background shindiggery, occasional bit of traffic, etc, etc. But if that background noise gets really, really loud, then you will notice that the AI actually starts to muffle your own voice as well as that background stuff. And so your voice doesn't come through quite so clear. And Google promises seven full hours of playback on these buds before they'll need to be stuffed back inside of the case for a recharge. I found the battery life was actually slightly better than the advertised length. Even with active noise cancellation switched on, it was around half an hour before the battery life even dipped below 100% on the Pixel Buds Pro app. And I found that I got around seven and a half hours of full on use before they were finally drained. And that is better than average for a modern pair of true wireless earbuds. And if you knock off the ANC, you'll get an extra couple of hours on top of that as well, which is just excellent. You'll be able to recharge the Pixel Buds Pro a couple of times fully by bugging them back in the dinky wee case, giving you around 30 hours of playback maximum with the ANC knocked off and around sort of 23, 24 ish hours with the ANC on. And when the case itself is drained, where well, you can either bung a Type-C USB cable in its bottom, otherwise it also supports wireless charging. So again, handy if you've got the likes of the Pixel 8 or the Pixel 8 Pro with that reverse wireless charging, just chuck it on the back to be able to power it up on the move. 
and the case itself hasn't changed up at all compared with last year. So once again, pleasingly dinky, nice and rounded, so easily slips into a pocket, a bag, or whatever. This is very, very cute indeed. So there you have it, my lovelies. That is the Google Pixel Buds Pro, improved and updated for 2023. And still not my favourite true wireless earbuds out there, especially as they do cost 200 quid. They are competing with Bose's and Sony's and the like. But if you're sold on those Google Assistant features and you've got yourself a Pixel Blower, you'll certainly be able to get the most out of these things. That's what I reckon anyway. It'd be great to hear your thoughts on the Google Pixel Buds Pro down below. Please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. And have yourselves a wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.